Yay Networks. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining the Real Talk Him podcast. I'm so excited because I got a room full of fire. I got a room full of bosses. I got a room full of people that are called of God and is stepping into their destinies and their purpose. So all that noise you're hearing, that's a whole bunch of people on fire for God. So we are excited to be in your living room, in your cars. And so I have one of my favorite people on the planet. I got a lot of those. I used to hate people, Ashley. I used to hate people, and now loving people is my favorite hobby on the planet. So I wanted to bring Ashton on one of my podcasts because Ashton, she is the daughter of my spiritual dad, Pastor Rod Parsley, um, that literally I walked out of his life in Bible school when he told me I shouldn't marry my son's father. <laughs> we didn't really, he, he didn't care who I was dating. It was just at that moment, I shouldn't have been getting married to nobody was what he was saying. And in the middle of the night, I packed my car and left. <laughs> And I went and married him because y'all know I just ain't scared of nothing. Yeah. And I didn't talk to Pops for another 25 years. And then God began to really do things in my life. And I think the thing that I love so much about this conference is I've had more people coming up to me saying, Pastor Kim, your elevation yeah. in the spirit yeah. in the last year and a half, two years is mind blowing and it's done something for us. And so when I think back to when God brought me back into y'all's lives, I was still like, I believe you. <laughs> I got the mohawk. I got the tutus. Yeah. And yet he saw the best in me even then and let me go preach at Dominion Camp Meeting. And I go, I'm, I'm getting to go back this year, just so honored. I want to start with this question right here because a lot of people are thinking exactly like I was thinking that I had done too bad and that God couldn't use me at the capacity that I needed him to use me. So my question is, being in a mega family, you're like the Kardashians. Oh, Lord. <laughs> in the church. I'll take it. I'll take it. But here's why. Because everybody watches you. Yes, ma'am. And Christians are way meaner than sinners. Oof. They are ruthless. Ruthless. <laughs> They, they, they don't just talk about your BBL right? like they do to the Kardashians. Mm -hmm. They talk about bad days. Yeah. They were sitting close to you and saw when you had moments of weakness. Mm -hmm. And then they start dragging you. And then they bring stuff up from 18 years ago. Oh, yeah. And they won't let you grow. Here's my question. How do you keep yourself sane? When podcasts are being dropped about your family, when your mom's not wanting to get out of the bed, when your brother's got, mm -hmm. uh, what's it called? Autism. Autism. Yeah. And your daddy is carrying the weight of the world and yeah. you are in a glass house. How do you handle disappointment from people that you thought had your back? Wow. Well, that is a loaded question. First loaded. of all, first of all, and thank I had you. More off that one question. <laughs> thank you for the honor of being on the podcast again and being here at the conference. I tell her every time, I'm just here to participate. I'm just here to receive. She's like, girl, I'm not like you better get on this podcast. So you know, you can't be around real talk, Kim, and stay stuck. She's gonna push you out of your comfort zone. And I'm so thankful for that. She is often imitated, never duplicated. Aww. And I'm so grateful for her yes, for her anointing, for the fact that she's never compromised who she is. And the glow up has been real indeed. But, but that's because of her full surrender to God. You know, it's not about extensions or she's back in the gym. Or the, it's about her full surrender, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. You always say that your fruit will outlive their lives. Yes. And you are living proof of that thank and God. such an example of that for me. Thank you, God. So thank you on a, on a personal note. And I'm sure on behalf of everybody here and listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube. But, oh, goodness, to answer the question, 
Um, how, how do I stay sane when I'm living in a glass house, which I was born into ministry. I'm 35, so I'm 35 years into this thing, into being in the public eye, you know, living life in the Petri dish underneath the microscope in the fishbowl. And it seems very simple to say, but it's certainly not easy to walk. And that is, you have to let the voice of God be louder than the noise of people. God is hard. Especially on social media. You know, you, you always say haters are confused fans. And, uh, <laughs> Maybe you stole my phone. Yeah. <laughs> She's, she's so protective of me, like, like a big sister, which I appreciate. Um, but yeah, you know, social media, it can just be a lot of noise. It's just so noisy. And one thing I did just on a practical level was I deleted everything except Instagram. That's just what felt right for me. I'm not saying if you have Facebook, you shouldn't, or if you have TikTok, you shouldn't. That's just what was right for me. So I, I only have the one platform. On another practical level, uh, not reading the comments. That's huge. Not, re- not reading the comments. And something that you've taught me is, you know, even when you are consuming those things or seeing those things or hearing those things, because sometimes you, you can't help it. Try as you may, try as you might, is y- you, can, you can hear it, you can see it, but don't let it get inside of you. <sighs> But that's hard. Don't let it take root. Yeah. And it's very hard to do. But the way that I do it is, again, quite simply, staying close to the cross. Yeah. Staying as close to God as I possibly yeah. can. Doing things to help quiet the outside noise so that I can hear His voice yeah. louder. I need His voice to be yeah. loud in my life. And yeah. he, he speaks to us all the time. God is always speaking. But it's a matter of whether or not we're in tune. Are we listening? Yeah. Are we open to receiving what he's saying? Yeah. And if if we're filling, you know, ourselves with junk, then there's no room. There's quite literally no room for God. You're filling your your ear gate, your eye gate with the junk and the nonsense on social media. Then he's coming to pour into you, but he's like, well, you're full already. So you have to stay, yeah, full of junk. And you have to stay, therefore, in a posture of surrender. I think that's something I'm learning in this season. You know, we can say all the time, especially those of us that have grown up in the church, let go and let God. Just let go and let God. And you're like, how? Okay, that sounds good, preacher, but how? And my dad is a preacher. You know, I've heard these chivalrous of tradition all my life. But sometimes we need to know how. And what I've realized in this season is that there is a difference in letting go and surrendering. The posture is different. The posture is different. Think about your posture when you're letting go and when you're surrendered. When when you're surrendered, you're not not up here. you're, You're not elevated you're, you're down low. You're on your knees in a posture of full and whole surrender to God where you get to a point where you say, I can't do this anymore. Not just I won't do it. I can't do this anymore. I'm surrendering so you can take over. I don't want to just let it go. I want you to take over. And that's kind of like what Mimi was talking about in one of our sessions about the Holy Spirit. Yes. It's, it's the same thing you're talking about here except with what we're walking through. Yeah. Yeah. Take over. Yeah. Full surrender. I, I think that in the church, again, you know, we talk, I I grew up, you grew up in the word of faith movement and, and I love to talk about this and, and such a powerful movement and principles that have stuck with me, with you throughout our entire life, our ministry. But I think that there's a, there's a key part of faith that, people are often missing or, or not thinking about it's not registering. And that is the trust in God. Because the word of, of you know, faith, that movement taught us to say a thing. 
right? Yeah. To say a thing in faith, to decree a thing, to declare a thing, the word of God, to prophesy in faith. But the other part of that in the scripture, it says, in faith, believing. Do you actually believe what you're saying? Is there trust attached to that, that what you're so saying shall come to pass? Because the word says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. But that's a conditional promise of God. You talked Golly. about promises of God earlier. There's 5,000 of them in the Bible, yeah. right? But they're all conditional. What does that mean? God will only do this if you will do that. So he says, say unto the mountain, be the arm. What's the mountain? Whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever your it is ex. you're facing, your ex, haters your on social media, you know, hateful comments. Right. Whatever it is that's in front of you that you're dealing with, that's your mountain. So say unto that thing, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea. But then it says, but believe. That's the conditional part. This part here isn't going to work unless you also believe it. And you can't be believe true. it stalking it. Right. <laughs> right. On the practical level. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. You can't. You can't. So the enemy comes in through the practical. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To try to get us so that we don't believe and do what God says to do because God is not a man that he should lie. That's right. Man, that's good. That's where the, Did y'all get what she just the said? trust comes in. <laughs> that's where the trust comes in. And, you know, again, I've been doing this thing three plus decades, and it wasn't until recently that I even started saying to God in, in my, you know, prayer time, devotional time, as I've been walking through a difficult season, just to be transparent. Um, it's, it's been a struggle. And I I've, I've didn't realize until I actually said it that it was one of the first times I'd ever said it. And I go, God, I can't do this. You have to yes. take this. You have to take this. Not just, I give this to you, God. You're in control. It's yours. It belongs to you. I, I can't fight it. You, you're fighting the battle for me. You know, and we can quote all the scriptures about God having the victory and, and, all of, and all of it is true. But it can't get activated in your life until you believe it. Until you believe it. And I realized as I was saying it, oh my God, this is the first time I've ever said, God, I surrender this to you. Man. I lay it at your feet. I can't carry it anymore. Take this from me. Take it from me and take over me and give me the strength to walk it out. First time I'd ever spoken it that way to God after being in the so church all these all years. All these years. Shouting. Yeah. Speak, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, we live in a world where everything is plastered all over social media. And it could be really easy to begin to compare your life to other people's. Comparison is the thief of joy. And it's easy to envy other people's lives. It might look like they have it all together on their Instagram. But in reality... They probably don't. Therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have. So you can start living your best life. You know, I love therapy because in, in especially in my late thirties, I started realizing that ever so often you need a checkup. You need to, sometimes you go through seasons where you need someone to just listen to you, to help you see things from a different perspective. So ever so often I'm going to get in better help myself and make sure my heart is clean of all debris. So if if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. I love that. Designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash 
RTK today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RTK. Here's my next question. That's so good, ain't it? She also articulates very well. Oh, yeah. And I'm here going, girl, ain't it? <laughs> You're Do fine. you really surrender it <laughs> over to God? I'm like, girl, do you get it or don't you? <laughs> that's why God gets people. That's why you got to walk in your own lane. That's right. That's hey. right. So listen, here's another question. How do you keep your own sound in a world full of people's expectations of you? Oh, you got a lot of people in this room that nobody in their family has ever been a rock star for Jesus. And they're gone from dealing drugs to now becoming a Jesus seller. Amen. And so how are they, how do you, because you have done this beautifully, because you got Mama Parsley, <laughs> Yeah. That everybody's like, oh, she's going to be the next Mama Parsley because she's the granddaughter in ministry. I remember when you were not in church. Yeah. When you were out in college and your daddy was letting you fly. Yeah. All of us had to walk through something like that. Yeah. How did you come back into this thing and you're like your dad's right hand and keep your own sound in a world of people's expectation of who you're supposed to become? Well... I would, I would say, again, being transparent, it's a lot of trial and error, Yeah. if I'm honest. It's a lot of trial and error, especially in ministry. Uh, you'll, you'll try a lot until you find out what your gift is not. <laughs> Sometimes you think, oh, my gift is that. You know, How do you my, find what your gift is not? You, you just do it all. You do it me. all. You know, it was, it was. I am not a kid's teacher. Uh, okay. I was, a, I was at a, a, a professor. I was a professor at our at our college. No. Shameless plug, Valor Christian College, fully accredited for your yeah, bachelor degree. If y'all want Bible school, Valor. <laughs> um, which, Valor. Valor has a great Bible school for all of you that want to go get your Bible degree. Thank you. Uh, but I, I started out as a professor of English at Valor, and I quickly learned that was not my gift. Why? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, you just have the patience. What's that? You have the patience. It wasn't that I didn't have the patience. It's that I had just graduated college, oh. so I knew all the tricks. And I just, uh, to be honest, I just couldn't take all the plagiarism. I said, y'all really are out here thinking that I am not going to notice this. When <laughs> I just got out of college, I know all the tricks. Um, but I didn't feel like teaching was my Yeah, gift. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I had not yet realized that, there were some things about platform ministry that I was gifted to do. Yeah. I didn't know that until I tried it. Yeah. Until I just quite literally stepped out. And I would say that's the spiritual piece of it. Yeah. The, the practical piece is just try it. Just, just try it. And if it doesn't work, that doesn't make you a failure. It just means that's not your gift. Or it could just not be your season for that, right? So it's okay for there to be trial and error. You just move on to the next thing. Okay, that didn't work. I'm going to try this. You know, some of you might try to write a book and it's and it and it doesn't work. That's okay. Good. Then maybe a podcast is for you. Maybe, you know, whatever. So, trial and error, but on on the the spiritual I really love that cuz I want them to get that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you got to do everything. Mhm. Mm like I, some of my masterminds are like, I just feel like I'm all over the place. I was like, good. That means you're trying everything. Yeah. Because as you try everything, then you realize what's not your lane. Yeah. Like people come to me all the time and say, can you get this devil out of me? I'm like, no. <laughs> We're not going to sit and throw up on my church floor today. I don't feel like it. But we have a lot of people in here that will do it for you. <laughs> I got a prayer team that literally will take you in the back. I see, in, I see, literally, they will take you in the back and get that devil out of you, and then y'all walk back in and have a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> but I just learned my lane, and so I think yeah. it's just really beautiful that a lot of you aren't walking in your gift because you're thinking that it needs to be a certain way, but you hadn't tried everything. Yeah. And it's okay to say, no, that's not my lane, so I love that. Yeah. And again, Try if, everything. Yeah, if it doesn't work, 
that don't equate that to failure. It can just be that simple. Just didn't work. Didn't work. I tried teaching. Didn't work. Didn't love it. One for me. Moving on to the next thing. Um, so good. On the, on the spiritual end of it, how I've been able to maintain my own sound or yeah. to, to find my lane is just strictly obedience. Just obedience. Again, seems simple, said, not always easy to do. But when you feel God leading you yes. to do something, the Holy Spirit speaking something to you, make like Nike and just do it. Just do it. Just be obedient. Like that's your job. Mm -hmm. Like when God has put something on your heart, that's God. Yeah. Like when something's in your belly and you're like, oh my God, I just feel this, but it's so stupid because nobody in my family's ever done it. That's God. You are the trailblazer. Mm -hmm. And so you do it with your knees knocking. Yeah. And you don't take it serious when you fall and people are laughing at you. Just get up again. Yeah. It's not personal. It's spiritual. Yeah. And you're learning. You don't, you don't quit riding a bike just because you fall off the bike. Yeah. You get back up again. And you do it again and you dust yourself off. That's so good about doing it with, with your knees knocking. Meaning, you know, there, there's a certain level of, of you know, trepidation and, and nervousness. And that's normal and that's valid. And I think oftentimes, especially as Christians, we equate that with, with doubt and unbelief, right? Uh, or we think that that means we lack peace. You can be nervous and still have peace. Just like you can be sad and still have joy, right? Because there's a difference in an emotion and a spirit. I, I have a friend sitting with me whose father passed away recently, and she never lost her joy. Was she sad? Was she grieving? Did she have her moments of, of weeping and mourning? Of course, but she never lost her joy, right? Because that's sadness is an emotion. Joy is a spirit, right? Dang. But you, so you can be nervous to... <laughs> You can be nervous to, to be obedient, but you, you just have to know that if you're being led by peace, that it is God. So what about that person that is saying, but I want to be fake? Like those people are saying, those people are saying, I, I just hear it, but, but I'm not joyful. How do they find that fruit of the spirit that you were just talking about? It's there. Yeah, I think, again, it, it has to do with being in tune to the voice of God. And how can you really, and, and knowing his nature, right? There, there was a, a pastor who, who taught my dad that the most simple definition of faith is just knowing God. Faith is simply knowing God. But how can you know someone if you're not in relationship with them? If you're not spending time with them, that's why some of y'all don't know God. The only time you get God is on my 8 a.m. prayer call. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we... But not after this weekend. <laughs> y'all about to be all fire! Sometimes I think, especially new believers, can be intimidated by prayer time, devotional time, having a dedicated time of, you know, the day or night where you are spending it with God. But it's so necessary what if it's they so say, necessary. I don't know what to say? Like, what do I do when I get in my prayer time? Like, tell Here, them. I can tell you, and this is not a one size fits all, right? This is not a formula for, for you to take and apply it to your own life because it's different for every, everybody, right? But one thing that I do on a practical level to get myself in the right frame of mind and my spirit in the right place to even begin my time of prayer and devotion is listening to her. I'm on those prayer lives every morning at 8 a.m. And people can tell if I didn't. My own father, who I've been listening to, again, for 35 years, two, three, four, five times a week, every week for my whole life. And I listen to him too, don't get me wrong. Shout out to dad, okay? But uh, you speak to me in a different way. I than, do believe that. I believe God sends voices in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially in certain seasons. Certain seasons, yeah. Um, so 
I'm I'm tuned in to your life every day, 8 a.m. That's how I start my day. And I can go to work or be going throughout my day and somebody will say, oh, girl, you must not have had your time today. Right? When people start to recognize when you haven't been in that time with God, you know it's working. So I think, again, on a practical level, you just have to find what works for you. For some of you, it can be listening to RTK's podcast. It can be tuning in to Limitless Live. It can be just playing worship music in your home or, or having your favorite preacher on YouTube. You know, get on the version app. Play the Bible while you're doing your hair in the morning, while you're in your car. But it's just, like the coolest thing, too, Ashton, yeah. for that version For all you single people out there that are getting ready for Bay that can pray. You put that dude on, and you put you some pillars around you, and pretend there's a big old burly man laying there. And blessed is a man who walketh not in the council. And you're <laughs> snuggled up to them pillow. <sighs> and it's God getting you ready for that. Yeah. You know, my grandma always said, junk in, junk out. Junk in, junk out. So if junk it's, in, junk out. Yeah, if it's word in, word out. Word in, word out. So... Whatever, whatever you are consuming, you will regurgitate, right? That's a fact, Jack. Whatever, whatever you're studying is what will ruminate in your mind. So if you're just studying the comments on social media, that's what's going to ruminate in your mind. But if you're studying the Word of God, well, again, whatever that means for you, if that's sitting with your Bible out in a journal, some type of written devotional, wonderful. If it's just having a podcast playing, again, while you're cooking dinner for your seven kids, however you can fit it in, however you can fit it in, fit it in, make the time, carve out the time. We all have time for what we want to have time for, right? You, you, you got time to, you know, I got time to get your extensions in, get the eyelash extensions going, all of that then you have time in that budget of the 24 hours of your day to spend it with God. And again, that's, that's how you form. That just burns some of y'all's tails. <laughs> that's how you form a relationship. I can't call my best friend who's sitting on the front row my best friend if, if I never spend any time with her. That doesn't even make sense practically, right? Like th- this is the person who has been through the trenches with me. Yes, and we, we spend absorbent amounts of time together. And even if we don't in person, we're FaceTiming, we're calling, we're texting, we're sending memes back and forth on social media. You know what I mean? That we're, we build relationship because we spend time together. And the same is true for God. And I really want to challenge you that when you go home, because when, when you leave a conference, it's like you're in the, like, I'm going to do it. I am just got this glory. I'm just floating through the clouds and the lilies and the valleys. And I want to challenge you that when you get home, that the first thing you do in the mornings is you spend at least five minutes with God. I'm talking, like, turn on while you're doing your makeup. Do some worship, right? Just, just, just be intentional about doing something different. You can't get different results as long as you keep doing the same junk that got you there. I love what she said, junk in, junk out. I can always tell when y'all hanging out with the crazy people God delivered you from. I can tell when you've gone back over on that side. I can tell when you ain't spent no time with God because you start acting weird. You start acting messy. You all of a sudden putting these stupid messages up on social media. And we're like, there she goes. There she goes. She's back on that side of the fence. <laughs> I can tell when your brain's going, when you're in the yeah. broccoli aisle and you're not on the Zoom call like you're supposed to. Yeah. I can tell when you just run your mouth all the time. And you ain't never got no peace. Junk in, junk out. Yeah. So what you put in, it squishes out all the bad. Yeah. Y'all, I am so excited. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I pray this has been blessing you, man. This podcast has been, we have been on fire. Yes. So listen, I have another question for you. Okay. How do you date... When you're a single Christian woman in the public eye. 
I love how the room went silent when you I said know, that. I know, because they want to know. How do you know. date silent? How do you know when he's equally yoked or not? Just your perspective. I know oh, you're still girl. making your way, but. Yeah, I'm single as a Pringle, um, which is fine, fine by me. Single as a Pringle. Single as a Pringle. I, my, my dad always says, you know, to the, to the young Valor Let girls. me rub on you. <laughs> yeah, rub that married anointing on me. Come on, baby. Um, but it will we'll tell the you know the young girls at, at the school pastor will say you you need to be more concerned about missing the right one than getting with the wrong one and and that's where i am in my life at this point i'd rather miss the right one than get the wrong one i'm just not in any hurry because i know god's timing is perfect do i have the lonely moments and the you know the boo hoo moments and the i wish i had my life to share with someone moments. Of course I do, you know, it, and women is especially, uh, we, we are wired to be nurturers and, and to be partners. And so that, that can be tough, but God's I, I do want to answer. Thank you. I do want to answer this part of your question though. How do you know yes. when you're unequally yoked? You just know period in your spirit, you know, in your spirit, you know, that's, that's the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. You know, Mimi was talking about that earlier in her session, which can we just give it up for Mimi? Because that was, that was a master class on the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. I won't get on that whole soapbox. That's another podcast, but the, she talked about the power of the Holy Spirit. And yes, the Holy Spirit is powerful and it can be loud and it can be boisterous, but it can also be that still small whisper. It can also be that feeling in your, in your come stomach on, come on. where you're just like, ooh, this doesn't quite feel right. Again, that's the lack of peace. Yes. God is not the author of confusion. He yes. is the author of Why y'all so hard headed? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we just think it's indigestion, but <laughs> really. It is the Holy Spirit. It's the, it's the Holy Spirit. And I'm doing this down here because your, your, your spirit, that's why we're always talking about laying hands on your belly, because this is where the indwelling of your spirit is. Your spirit lives here in your gut. You know, the world calls it a gut feeling or an intuition. Oh, I've got an intuition or a gut feeling about this. The, the same is true on the spiritual side. It's it's that gut that gut punch or that just that slight, you know, just ooh, there's something doesn't feel right about this. That's the Holy Spirit convicting you. That's the Holy Spirit guiding you. Right? Talk about it. The the world often talks about doing a 360 turn. Okay? The Holy Spirit is there to help you do a 180 turn. What does that look like? Talk I'm going about it. this way. And then the Holy Spirit comes in and says, ooh, 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 nope, don't, we're just going to adjust it a little bit. And now here you're going this way. Because I don't want to do a 360 where I end up right back where I was. I want to do a 180 and go the opposite direction of where my flesh wanted to go. <laughs> because we know that always ends in chaos and destruction and ruin and heartbreak and all the things. So just like I think when people ask you, well, how did you know Angela was the one? Yeah. You say, I just knew. Oh, yeah. knew, in, knew in my knower. That's what my dad would say. You just knew in your spirit. You will know in your spirit if they're the wrong one as well. Man, there was just like so much peace. Yeah. Like there was just so much, just everything. Like it, I, I feel like that when you're dating someone, you've got to ask, do you think this is the one? They're not the one. Mm -hmm. Because God comes in peace and not confusion. And that's why we are teaching them, Ashton, about the Holy Spirit today. Yeah. Because the church isn't talking about that enough. Right. We talk about, you're going to go to hell. But we don't talk about knowing the Holy Spirit, which causes you to not do things that would cause you to go to hell. It's just a way of life. Yeah. And so expound a little bit on some of the stuff Mimi was talking about today. So... In this season of my life, again, as I've been, you know, walking through a trial, a tough time, uh, which am I by myself on that? Anybody else? Can I some, get a witness somebody? Yeah. I feel like some of us have been in, in a, you know, 
Saul, Saul but Damascus don't, Road experience. But don't you, don't you think that happens before God's about to really do something? Absolutely, absolutely. The point of your greatest satanic opposition always comes at the point of your greatest breakthrough. The devil is fighting you so hard right now in the season because he knows what's on the other side of it. He's trying to do everything he can to keep you held back from that breakthrough. I mean, God, how, how many times, girl. Brittany, have we texted each other and said, I know there must be a big old blessing because Lord, all hell is breaking loose. That, that's how you know the enemy will really start tar like targeted attacks, really just hounding you bad, all kinds of stuff. Just and this know. is when a lot of people walk away from Jesus, Ashton. Right. Hold because on. Because they, yeah, they say, I hold didn't on. have this before I started being a follower of Jesus. Yeah. Just, just hold on because what I've learned in this season, what I've always known, but the way that the Holy Spirit is really speaking to me in this season is he is the paraclete. What does that mean? He is the comforter called alongside you. Sometimes I think in the church, especially based on what religion you grew up in, the Holy Spirit is like this spooky thing that we think comes down, yes. and sets on us like a dove and blankets us. And it's like you do the... And I'm not knocking that. There, there's a time and a place for everything, right? But the, the, Holy, the Holy Spirit is, is not a spooky God, he's not. thing. He is, like you said, it's a it's lifestyle. Not. The way that we say we invite Jesus to come and live in our hearts when we get saved, yes. the Holy Spirit comes to live in us as well, yes. right? And, and so he comes to walk alongside of you, which means what? He's there to guide you. Yes. He's there to guide you, gently pushing you in the right direction if, again, you are in tuned and inclined to listen to him. Well, how do I get in tuned and inclined? You continue to get to know him. Get to know. And how the do I get to does know not him? want you to do that. No. That's why you no, can't even pray. No. And with, with regard to, well, let me answer how I can hear some of you saying, how do I get to know the Holy Spirit? The word. The word. Look, get you a good concordance or God bless Google and Siri. Just get on there and Search scriptures on the Holy Spirit, and boom, 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 it'll all come up. It's, it's right there in the Word, in our guidebook for life. Anything you want to know Ashton, about the Holy Spirit. chat GPT. <laughs> Not AI. <laughs> Can absolutely sure. write you a whole Bible study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I, can say, it. I can say one thing that has helped me over the years learn about the Holy Spirit is observing people who actively move in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. She's one of them. My father is, and my grandmother, again, could teach a master class. I know I make fun of a lot, like, <laughs> but I can follow the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. Devils cannot hang you, in my you presence. Know how to, you know how to flow. Yes, I You do. know how to flow and move in the Holy Spirit. Um, but what, what were we talking about? I just lost my whole train of thought. <laughs> that was the devil. <laughs> What was I? What was I talking about? Yeah, you follow people who move in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but before Me that, and your daddy and your mama getting in the Word, the Paraclete. Yes, thank you. Um, See, good listener. <laughs> I appreciate. I mean, we're we're live. I might as well just say if I if I lose my train of thought, you know, it's fine. It. Um, but oh, here's where I wanted to go. Thank you. Thank you, and that's, there, that's the Holy Spirit. Here's where I wanted to go. Uh, one, one way to, to learn to move in the Holy Spirit and to have that voice be louder than the noise, like I talked about at the beginning, is that baptism with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Because you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit and not have the evidence of speaking in tongues. And again, Mimi did such an incredible job explaining that to us earlier. Um, the, one of the reasons to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is because when you do that, you are speaking in the tongue of men and of angels. That's what the word says. And you are speaking mysteries, mysteries into the atmosphere, into your future. Those words that only God knows will go into your future. So sometimes Jesus. you get to a place 
And I've been here recently where you don't know what else to pray. You've run the gamut of your scripture confessions and you have fasted and you have, you know, been laying uh, out on the floor and heaving, crying, and you've done your worship music and you've, you've just reached the, the end of yourself saying, God, I don't know what else to do about this. I don't know what else to pray. That's when you pray in the spirit. That's when you pray in the spirit. And, and really all the time, pray in the spirit all the time. Yes. Just get yourself in the habit of doing that. And I'm not saying don't engage in real life, okay? I don't need you going through Burger King and hot da 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 bosada, I'll take a whopper and da 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 ba she it. I don't need you doing all that, right? Okay. But the the other thing McFlurry, <laughs> shut up, ba 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 with fish fries, ba la the other thing that the, the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues is used for, and again, this is confirmed in the word, this isn't just me saying this, is it is for a witness to the unbeliever. Oh, wow. It is a witness to the unbeliever, okay? Because not everybody that comes into a, a room like this, into your church back home or your Bible study or your women's group, right? They're not all believers, they're, they're not all safe. Some of them are just coming to see what's up, right? Or, the, or something has drawn them to, to that place. And so we use that as, as Holy Ghost-filled, baptized believers. We use that as a sign to these unbelievers, not to, not to impress them. It's not a party trick. But it scares some unbelievers is what they're thinking in their heads yeah, right now. It, it, then what? It can, but what you have to believe, right, what you have to trust in God is that he will take over. Kim, Pastor Kim talked about it earlier. She said, sometimes I'm praying in the spirit and I don't feel nothing. I don't feel nothing. But the longer I do it, all of a sudden that spirit takes over and that spirit will minister in, in the way that that person needs to be ministered to, right? Because you don't even know the person standing next to you that's an unbeliever, what you're praying in the spirit could be for them. So, so good. That's some well, little you know, I hate tidbits. it. We got to say goodbye, <laughs> but I sure do love y'all and I'll see you next week. Thank you for sharing. Bye. Yay Networks.